had some requests for video on how I machine casings. Um, the first step that you need to do to remove all of the interior knuckles, can you see those in that? Yep. Is to use a hole saw. The hole saw looks like this. It's just a straight shaft with teeth on the end. It's hollow in the center and the lathe is turned down. It's got a pilot on the top of the valve set and then a, a guard in the bottom so that I don't distort any valve casing threading. You're gonna get it over the top of it first, turn on the machine, and then slowly, you can feel it cutting as you're going. Just wanna take your time, and you'll feel it as it passes each of the knuckles. As soon as it's by, you're going to shut the machine off and you're going to back it off. Weird. The handle I'm using is just made of oak. It's held me back by a copper strap and it gives me the ability to hold on to the valve set as I'm doing this step. Um, normally, I can't say normally because in the industry, every manufacturer does this differently. A lot of them use uh, CNC or milling machines. This is not what I'm doing. I'm just... I'm not... Okay, the second step after the hole saw has cleaned out the inside of the valve set and the knuckles are gone at this point. Mm -hmm. Is that visible? Yep. The second step is to use a you call it, it's just a reamer and what it is is it has a pilot that is the same size as the hole saw it's got a set of blades that follow that pilot that expand the interior hole and then after the blades there's a new shank size that is just about a thousandth or two under the blade size so that as it goes through it stays in a nice straight line um, I'm using guards on the bottom of the valve set and I'm using a pilot on the top to make sure I'm maintaining consistency and I don't turn the machine on until I know that I'm in the valve body. You have to use cutting oil as you're going. And it looks like I'm holding it with my left hand and what I'm actually doing is letting it ride on the, on the carriage. Okay, I've got a steel mandrel inside the valve set. This is between machining steps two th and three. So the interior of the casing is opened up to 629 thousandths of an inch. The mandrel is at 625. And this is when I'm gonna actually stamp a logo on the, the valve set and then a serial number. Um, normally I would do this all as a, as a set, but since I'm just doing this one for Example, I'm going to do it just want to make sure the name is centered. It's an arbor press, and I'm not going to press it. The stamp is sitting in the casing at this point. I'm going to drop a weight twice to put the logo into the valve body. You can see that. Can you see it? Okay, so once the name goes in, in all of the casings, however many we're doing, if we're doing five or 10 or eight or whatever, then I'll reverse it, flip the casing around, change over to our number stamp and stamp a serial number in each valve body as well. But right now it's just the one name and that's how I do the stamping. From here, the reason you do the stamping between machining sets is if you take the mandrel out, you'll see a small dent on the interior of the valve set. And the next machining step will remove that. Okay, this is part of the valve process, building a valve casing. Once you're done with the internal machining, so you get these to a specific size, um, you still need to add, in this case, I put balusters on the valve body took it to uh, to finish the process of building it. 
I'm going to make balusters. Um, once it's machined, after brazing, you're going to machine. After the machining is completed, what you want to do is you want to straighten the casing out so that it's nice and level and parallel and everything lines up. You also want to straighten out all the knuckles so that they're facing correctly, so that their vertical alignment lines up with the casing itself, so that their other vertical alignment lines up with the three, in this case, casing tubes that are in a line. The fourth valve is offset slightly to the right-hand side, to your right hand. Um, once that's complete, you need to clean them, and then they need to be normalized because they've been brazed, they're super soft at that point, and you can't necessarily build them and then hone them because you're going to push the material versus cutting it, and it won't last as long. Um, in this case, the knuckles that I use for the curved parts are 260 alloy, and the casing tubes are also 260 alloy. It's difficult to machine, it's a complete pain to work with, but it's also much more durable than 360 alloy is. So in the case of hardening brass, it works exactly the opposite of steel. You would think that when you, when you harden steel just for case hardening, you heat it up, you throw it into some water, and then it's hard. You need to temper it afterwards so it doesn't break because it becomes brittle. Brass, on the other hand, when you anneal it, and I mean annealing it, getting up to like an orange color or a temperature just shy of melting, it will stay malleable and soft in that state. If you take it to a much lower temperature for a longer period of time, then you get this as a result. These casings have been hardened in an oven, and the material is completely different. When they went in, they're soft and they're dead. For instance, if I were to take a, an Allen key and hang it, and this was a normal casing would have no resonance. It's hard to hear it. When they're hard, they're, they've become very durable. So when you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna put balusters on and you're going to hone them, you're gonna get them to cut correctly and then you're gonna get good valve wear with the piston inside of the valve. Um, you don't have a super soft surface then that you're working against. So that's uh, valve bodies. It won't go into temperatures or anything like that. If people wanna know, they can ask. I'll tell them, it's no big deal. It's not like it's a trade secret or anything, but. At that point, I'm on to making balusters now. Yeah, I'm at the point of balustering. I have three of the valve sets done, and I'll show you what it looks like. I have a handle with a steel mandrel that's inserted into it that's roughly the size of the interior of the valve set currently, before it's honed. So the mandrel has a locating pin on the top. Where to go? And through the bottom and we have a plug that goes into the top that guides the baluster and helps to center it. When you're fitting balusters to valve sets, you want to make sure that the machined baluster and valve fit is not so snug that you have to like beat on it with a hammer to, to set it. Um, you're going to heat it, you're going to flux it, and I use uh, Stabrite. And Stabrite is soft solder that just has a higher melting point. So, this is what it looks like to put on a baluster. So make sure you preheat the material, even before you flux it. solder kind of flick out of it and pop, and you'll know you're at the bottom of the valve set. Once you've done that, reflux it and reheat it. Got 
got gloves on, so these parts get very hot if you work with them. And you just work yourself or work your way down the ballast set to go to the next piston. That's how I install ballasters.